Hello there, my name is Frances Hume and I work for a charity called Interfaith Scotland. In this video, we're going to share with you a little bit about Interfaith Scotland's work and why we think interfaith is so important. But first of all, the most important question is, what is interfaith? And what is interfaith dialogue? Well, the answer is in the name itself. Inter means between. Faith could be different religions or beliefs. So between religions and dialogue is about conversation with one another. So it's having conversations about faith. These could be between people of different religions and beliefs and also people who don't have a particular religion, but want to learn about different faiths and about different people's life journeys and learn about what people have to think about different topics. So, for example, people might look specifically at their faith journey and what they believe, or they might take a topic such as the environment, and climate change and find out what that faith has to say about that. Through that we learn from people from their different faiths and beliefs. So I have some pictures here and the reason I got involved in interfaith was because I spent some time living in India and I met people from all different religions. Now I don't know if you can tell what religions these people are from just by looking at the pictures but on the top left there, we have some Tibetan Buddhist monks. And I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time in a Tibetan Buddhist monastery in India. And I was woken up every morning by the sound of the monks chanting from as young as the age of about six. And it seemed so calm and peaceful that I found out a little bit about Buddhist meditation and calming the mind. Then on the right hand side, you'll see there's a lady with a headscarf and she's from the Muslim faith. And one thing I found interesting in India is that five times a day, Muslims would pray and they would pray wherever they were. So if they were outside or if they were in their house. And I thought that was amazing because um, I think I would be feeling quite shy to pray in public, but they didn't mind, they did their prayers outside. So I learned a lot from them too. And then on the bottom left, uh, there's a picture there of two young Sikh boys. They can, you can tell they're from the Sikh faith because of the turbans they're wearing on their heads. And I spent a bit of time in somewhere called the Golden Temple, which is the center of the Sikh faith in the Punjab in a town called Amritsar. And it's a beautiful place and they feed thousands and thousands of people every day for free. So you get a lovely vegetable curry if you go there. And again, I learned a lot about the generosity of people in the Sikh faith. So I learned something new and interesting from people of all different religions uh, that I thought was a, a really beautiful practice that um, has inspired me as well on my own life journey. So looking at different interfaith activities that people do in Scotland and around the world, it might involve visiting a place of worship. So in this picture, we have um, members of our youth group going along to a synagogue in Glasgow called Garnet Hill Synagogue and finding out more about the faith from the people who worship there. It could involve visiting beautiful spiritual places in Scotland. Now, I don't know if you know about any spiritual or significant place in Scotland. Um, we have been to the island of Iona, which is where St. Columba came, and it's said that he brought Christianity to Scotland. We have been to Holy Isle, which is in those pictures there, and that's off the island of Arran, and that is owned by the Tibetan Buddhist community where they have an interfaith center. So we like to come together and talk about different faiths and beliefs and our faith journeys with one another. It could involve going to an event with music and dancing and food 
and celebrating these things from different cultures, uh, whether it's from India or Africa or the UK, uh, different types of music and food and just enjoying and celebrating together. And it could involve getting involved in a community project. So in the pictures, these come from a group called Aberdeen Interfaith Group. And on the bottom left there, they are um, planting trees. And we have something called the World Interfaith Harmony Grove, uh, part of the organization Trees for Life, where you can buy trees and help with the environment and um, putting more oxygen into the environment for everyone to breathe. So um, that's one community project that one of our local interfaith groups is involved in. And also they get together and prepare food for the homeless. So you'll see there's a there's a Catholic nun there preparing food uh, with her friend from a different faith. And so working together to make the world a better place for everybody. So why is interfaith dialogue important? Well, let's have a think about some of the things that bringing people from different faiths together can do for our world. First of all, it's a chance to celebrate our diversity. So in these pictures, you'll see there's some women wearing different types of headscarves. So on the left there, we have a Muslim lady wearing a headscarf called a hijab. And then she is next to uh, a lady who's wearing an African headscarf. And then on the right, there's two women who are wearing um, a turban. If you remember, there were boys wearing the turban in the other picture. And these um, are ladies who can wear turbans as well if they want to. So sharing the, the, the different aspects of faith uh, could be a fun way of getting to know each other and finding out, for example, why people wear a headscarf in their religion. It's also an important way of overcoming suspicion of others. So there's a, a picture there of a, a Muslim and a Christian looking at each other a little bit suspiciously, but they're both praying to God. Now, it could be overcoming suspicion between people of different religions, but it could also be people who aren't from a religion having maybe a negative stereotype or fear of someone who's different from them, maybe the way that they look or they might hear negative things about that religion. So it, we believe that when you meet people face to face, it gives uh, an opportunity to break down those fears and stereotypes and just see each other as human beings to make friends. Responding to world events. Now, in the media, you may hear various things about people from different religions, sometimes anti-Muslim, anti-Jewish, anti-different faiths, and these can be linked into world events. So for example, if there is um, some fighting or terrorism in a different country, let's say somewhere in the Middle East, then there can be a negative effect for people from uh, Muslim or Jewish backgrounds because of the political situation and people can link religion and politics together. And therefore, people can be discriminated against or treated badly because of their religion, even though it's got nothing to do with them. And it's maybe about a war or fighting or something not about religion at all, but it's used as a tool uh, for doing these things in other countries. And um, then people in our country can have a negative uh, result to that because they get treated in a worse way. So um, we try and support people of different faith communities who maybe experience um, negative things um, as a result of some of those world news items that we see in social media and the news. Building friendships, of course, is an important part of uh, our interfaith experience and getting to know one another. And in a way to learn from each other, we gain in understanding and respect and really uh, create more positive communities with one another. Religious rights and inclusion. In Scotland, we believe it's really important that the religious rights of people of all faiths are upheld in society. So an example of this is that people from different religions are allowed to express their religious identity through what they wear. 
So you'll see the picture on the left hand side, there's a Muslim lady wearing her hijab. And on the right hand side, there's a Christian girl wearing a cross. So we work with the Scottish government to promote the, the rights of people of different faiths to express themselves and look after their needs uh, in different aspects of life as well. Sharing common values. Now, if you look at the scriptures of all the different religions, you'll find that they have something very similar to say about the way that we treat other people. And this is called the golden rule, to do to others as you would have them do to you. So when we start studying the scriptures of different faiths, we find that there's a real commonality of values. So whether it's to do with caring for people, caring for animals, caring for our planet, uh, looking after others and making sure that we treat them the way we want to be treated. So that is something we have in common in the scriptures, but there's also a common experience between people of different faiths. So if you have a look, you'll find that they all have prayer and worship. They all have holy books. They all join together in community with one another, maybe at a place of worship. They care for people and the environment, as we just mentioned in the previous slide, and having idea of a meaning, purpose and hope in life as well. So now I'm going to share with you in a bit more detail about the work of Interfaith Scotland. We are an organisation that has membership and there are members from 40 different groups that makes up all the different religions that you find in Scotland and different denominations or groups within those religions. So, for example, Protestant and Catholic within the Christian Church and also the interfaith groups which exist around the country. We have what we call a youth advisory board, and that's made up of young adults of all different religions who come together to put on interfaith activities. We also have a schools programme where volunteers from different faiths go into schools all over Scotland, both primary and secondary, and speak to the young people about their faith and what it means to them. And it means that the young people have an opportunity to ask questions, find out more. And through that experience, we find it breaks down some of those negative stereotypes that I mentioned before that people might have towards people of different faiths or countries or cultural backgrounds. It's also an opportunity to try on religious dress and um, try out some musical instruments from different faiths, for example, a Tibetan Buddhist singing bowl. Uh, so we try and make it as interactive and as interesting as possible. We also offer training in religion and belief to all sorts of different groups, whether it's voluntary organisations, charities or public bodies to share a bit about different faiths and what the needs might be of people from those different religions in society and in their day-to-day -day lives. Twice a year, the religious leaders of Scotland meet together and they talk about all the important issues affecting people in society today. So in this picture, the religious leaders are meeting during COP26 when the world leaders met together in 2021 to discuss uh, the climate emergency and reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So they met in George Square in Glasgow and they had different prayers and readings from their scriptures and 500 people came along to listen to them and find out more about what different faiths had to say about caring for the environment. So they look at important issues together and how people from their different religions can support each other to make the world a better place. 
We also have women's dialogue events all over Scotland. So that's for women of all different ages and faiths to come together and talk about important topics, whether it's health and well-being or values and visions for Scotland. It's a lovely opportunity for people in local communities to come together. In Scotland, we have what's called local interfaith groups. And these are groups of people in all different parts of the country who come together, who want to meet people from other faiths and cultures and get to know each other better in the community. So there's 20 groups uh, throughout Scotland that we know of and support. And once a year, we bring them together to something called an annual networking seminar so they can share what they've been up to and good practice between them. We also have an exhibition called Faces of Faith. And this is an exhibition of 16 photographs of people from different religions who live in Scotland and with their personal stories underneath the photographs. And this has been touring all over Scotland uh, to schools, universities, libraries, uh, art galleries, and it's available for people to book in in their school or wherever it is in the place that they live. And so you can always get in touch if you want to have the Faces of Faith exhibition. And we have materials for discussion and questions and worksheets around this as well.